The next thing I know, it jumps and it rolls a mile down the canyon. And I'm like, well, we're gonna get that later because I'm not walking down there to get that. Tony Pellegrino with Gen Right Off Road here in Simi Valley, California. I'm the founder and president, and that's short for Genuine Ideas Engineered Right, and we specialize in all Jeep products. I grew up dirt bike riding from the age of five, love off-road, love anything on wheels, honestly, and along came King of the Hammers. It's a really tough race, a lot tougher than most people think. It's definitely a different style. It takes a different to be able to go fast and then slow down and get in those rocks and, and get through and, and survive. By the time Brian and I joined forces, we had an, a built LS3. You know, we had some more power. It was, it was definitely better. And uh, then it was a matter of learning the car, shock tuning. Um, I, I've, you know, had all kinds of uh, mishaps during shock tuning, crashing. I mean, we blew all four wheels off one time, just shock tuning. The first couple years of us racing, we were pushing the parts way harder than the manufacturers ever, ever imagined we could. And the faster we went, the more quickly parts wore out or broke. Um, you know, Curry actually ended up developing that Rock Jock 70 that we're currently running because of us. We, we just kept breaking everything they could throw at us until finally they came out with that. So there were, there were a lot of parts like that. The first couple of years, our issues were, you know, we, we had a wheel break off. We were stuck in a canyon, um, really in not a good spot, right? I had to spot other cars. You had to run to the pit, which fortunately wasn't too far. The agreement is you're going for parts and I'm going to start taking apart the car. And where, where we parked, we, we were coming up a pretty steep canyon. It's, it's called 19 and 20. And um, as we came up there, the, where we broke was in a, in a terrible spot, you know, to get a jack under, to work on the car, the whole thing. All rocks. So um, you're gone. I start taking off the wheel. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get everything. Well, the first thing I got to do is get the spare off because our jack is underneath there, right? So it's a 42-inch tire weighs 150 560 pounds right but the back of the car is literally like so eight high. feet in the air right so, so i'm trying to slide it off real slowly um well if you've ever taken a spare tire off you know it's got some air pressure in it so when it hits it bounces right well i'm i'm not prepared for the bounce this thing takes right the next thing i know it jumps and it rolls a mile down the canyon and i'm like well, we're going to get that later because I'm not walking down there to get that. I need the jack, right? So I'm focused on just getting the car apart. So when you get back, we're ready to go, you know. But I meantime, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I see other racers running over and shit. They're probably like, where'd this tire come from? It's brand new, you know? Yeah. Well, there it is way down there. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was pretty funny. Cause I was like, oh yeah, I'm not Dude, chasing that, that thing. Trying to get the orange boot off and figuring out how to pry it because we didn't have the right shit to get it off. Well, neither you nor I had ever done actually that. done that, right? No. So it takes special sockets and you got to have the fitting and you got to use a half inch socket with a three inch adapter. And yeah. I'm like, who thought of all this stuff? This is crazy Over stuff. Really We're like two monkeys trying to fucking yeah. figure something out for the and it's And it's getting cold. Our fingers are getting cold yeah, and gone down. down, you know. And I'm like, dude, we got to get this, like, just band-aid it back together and let's get out of here yeah. so meantime you know we see other racers that have called it quits there's cars like all over the place and you know not many cars had come by maybe maybe five so i was like jacking the thing up and i'm like man if anybody even touches this thing it's falling off the jack so then i'm trying to find other rocks to stack under like a jack stand you know and as they come by i'm spotting them to make sure they clear the car and but maybe only five or six cars that even come by i mean there, there wasn't many people left in the race um, I remember very distinctly you came back with a backpack that was so heavy that, that you walked up to me and you turned around and you said, dude, help me get this off because it's going to take me down. And I, I remember like, I'm thinking, how did the straps even hold on? This thing was so heavy. I don't even know how many hundreds of pounds it weighed, but it was like heavy. And the sun's going down. It's getting cold. You know, we're, we're like, we got to get this car fixed. And uh, I, I do remember by the time we, you know, paper clipped it back together we did the bare minimum we got ourselves into the pit we told the crew like redo it all because we did a terrible job 
fortunately, they had a fire going. They had some food for us. You know, we got there, tried to warm up a little bit. They got it all fixed. We got back in the car, and then the other side broke off on the next trail. And, and you and I are just like, really? I mean, you know, we're, we're in the car. You can see the two front wheels, and all of a sudden, one just, like, goes away. You're like, oh, man, that's not good because there's no hole there. It didn't go down in a hole. It just disappeared. So um, at that point, you know, it was freezing, we're, you know, there wasn't many people left in the race. There wasn't much time left in the race. We were just trying to finish. And I remember getting up to the pit and going, okay, we got this. Yes. They're going to fix it. Yep. And we are good. And, we're, and we're, we had enough time to still get around. Yep. But when the second break happened, we were just like, dude, yeah. we do happened, not have the energy to be fixing it a second time. Dark. And then weren't we there? For like a lot of hours yes. before they could get to yeah. us. Yeah, so at that point, you know, when we left that pit, we, we had a lot of desert to get to the next trail. So now we're considerably further than walking yeah. back to the pit. So for you to walk back to the pit, it was pointless because even if you could get there still within time, that by the time you got back and we fixed it, there was no chance. And now it was getting cold. This was one of the colder nights that I ever remember um, even when we come to the finish and we're hanging out at night, this this was colder than that. There was, the there was a little wind, and it's you know it's all solid rock, so it's just the temperature's just like going down. And uh, yeah, basically the crew finally got to us after the race timed out, and they worked on the car to get it out of there. And uh, you and I went back and got a warm shower and tried to warm up. So yeah, that that was a rough rough time for sure. Um, what racing means to me is an accelerated R&D platform. You're, you're pushing parts harder and further than they were ever designed to be pushed. And uh, for us as a, a Jeep parts manufacturer, that allows us to trickle that knowledge, that experience down into the products that we offer for all of our customers. And uh, then ultimately design systems around that, like our suspensions. And, um, you know, it's, it's, nobody can build anything as good as the stuff we're doing. And it's for that reason. Every time we climb in our cars and pull our belts tight, new memories and stories are created. We are on a mission to bring these stories to life, both for our community and for those outside off-road to understand the allure. So please help us in sharing these stories.